Welcome to the AQS studio in Paducah, Kentucky. I'm Bonnie Browning, and this is the third class in our AQS Less Quilt series. And we're gonna make a really fun quilt this time, and you're gonna get to use up a bunch of scraps right out of your stash, and it will take a few, uh, and we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. All of the things that we have here on the on the set today are things that we're going to be using during this class. First of all, we have the Bernina 770 QE sewing machine, made especially for quilters. Everything Mary provides a carrying case for your sewing machine, and believe it or not, this case is big enough to fit this machine. They also have other cloth and fiber uh, containers that you can set on your studio or the one with the color on it, the, the printed pattern, is a great little bag to be able to store your fabric in that you're using for this particular project. One of our other sponsors is Off the Wall Quilt and they will be providing the rulers, the rotating mats, the design a wall and we'll be using both this 18 inch one and the 72 inch one when we get ready to put our blocks on the design wall. Panasonic irons and this happens to be the iron that I use at home and I like it because it has a retractable cord and it's pointed on both ends. Havels is providing the mat, the rotary cutter and our scissors this time. So we can't do without having a sewing machine cabinet to put the machine in, and that's coming to us from Tracy's Tables. Let's talk a little bit about what we need to do with our fabric. Before we do that, we're going to take a short word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back and talk fabric. I'm Amanda Murphy, and I'm a quilt and pattern designer. The Bernina Q16 is quilting magic. One of the hallmarks of a great quilting experience is when you lose yourself in your work. Bernina, made to create. Everything Mary strives to make people's lives brighter by designing and creating craft storage solutions. From sewing storage to general storage, we make items varying in material and uses to make your creative journey easier. Okay, now we're going to talk just a little bit about color. I'm not going to give you a color wheel lesson, but I really use, I'm using this more to just show you uh, the difference between lights and mediums and darks. And so anytime you have the pure color, that's going to be in the medium range. And then when you add white to it, it becomes, let's use yellow here, it becomes the light range. And then when you add black to it, it's going to become the dark range in your color scheme. So, all right, so now I'm just going to show you the easiest way that I know to sort your fabrics. And to do that, I'm going to, and you can see I just have a whole range of colors here. These are all the four inch squares that I've cut. You're going to need 150 light four inch squares, 150 medium four inch squares, and 150 dark four inch squares. And with that many squares, we will be able to make a quilt that is six blocks by eight blocks. Um, pretty much a twin size, matting borders, you could make it a little larger. Uh, but it'll make a nice quilt and it'll be all different colors. So let's talk about how to sort these. You know, sometimes when we try to sort light and medium and dark, you get confused because you don't know where the lights end and the medium start or the medium start and the darks end. And so we're going to just sort it in two piles. So I'm going to pick up my fabric and I'm going to sort one pile is going to be light. One pile is going to be dark. Another light. 
another dark, light, dark. And if it doesn't fit in this pile, do you see how much darker that looks? You need to put it in the next pile. Now, these are some of the fabrics that will cause you problems. And that's because it's hard to tell, should it be in my light pile or should it be in my dark pile? Well, I'm going to put it over here, and to me that looks darker than our lights, and so I'm going to throw it over here. The same thing with this little paisley. These are the ones that I call, these are the troublemakers, because it really depends on what you put them next to, how they read. All right, now this is pure yellows. I'm going to put those uh, yellows, almost always I put yellows in the light pile, because everything else is going to be darker than yellow. And we may sort that out a little bit later, but you can see I have quite a few yellows. Okay, those are darker. Again, darker, 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 lights. Now, one of the things I found as I was cutting these fabrics for myself was that I didn't have as many lights as I had mediums and darks. So I had to go scrounging. Now, if you're a beginning quilter and you don't have very much fabric or you don't have very many scraps that are left over from other projects, one of the things that you could do is go buy two yards of a light fabric and use that light consistently every place that we use light on this block. And, and if you do that, then everything else that you have will fit in the medium to dark piles. So I try to find a white on white or one of these pretty uh, tone on tones. And so as I sort through this, you can see that I have quite a few. I have lots of in this pile and not so many in the next pile. All right, now, I don't know. I'm going to put that over here and see what happens to it. More lights. Anytime you have something with a black background, that almost always is going to go into your dark pile. Now, I will tell you, I've had people in class when I've taught this that have done some interesting different things. I had one quilt guild ask if they could use my technique for this quilt to make a raffle quilt. And what they did was all of the lights had to be white or a very light color. Uh, it could be off-white, white. All of the mediums were different reds, and they wanted those to be sort of pure red, but there would be some that would be a little darker or a little lighter. And all of the darks were navy blue. I have to tell you, it made a stunning patriotic quilt. I also have had someone who made a lot of baby quilts, and she had lots of pastels. Well, so what we did with her pastels is we sorted them just like this into light and dark. And then when you got ready to do the next sort, we ended up with three piles, made a really charming quilt. Okay, so that's kind of darkish, isn't it? You see how many more darks I have in this pile? Lots of darks. Dark reds, black print, Kapow. Here's some more lights. Black. Now you might ask how many of how many of the same fabric. We're not attempting to make every every single triangle in this quilt to be a different fabric. That would be a charm quilt. This is really meant for you to use up your scraps. And so you can see that I've cut maybe four or even as many as six of some of these fabrics. There's a half a piece. You can tell I was really cutting scraps, wasn't I? Uh-oh, I don't think that one will work. And you'll find those as you sort through these. And of course, you know, they sometimes like to stick together. If you cut them together, a lot of times they will stick together. 
And, and that is what I did. I cut, them, I cut them in stacks. Usually not more than six layers of fabric do I cut, uh, mostly because I just find that it, sometimes your rotary cutter will kind of veer off. More lights, more darks. You can tell here I cut some extra lights, didn't I? Okay, now before I go on and we sort those again, I want to just show you what happens sometimes when you have black fabrics. Because depending on how much white is on them, uh, sometimes you can use those as a dark and sometimes you can use them as a medium. But this one has a little tiny print Definitely fits in our dark pile. But now look what happens when you get to a print like this. You see how next to these darks that this definitely could be a medium? Or if I put it against a light, it could be a medium or it could be a dark. Same, okay, so here's a polka dot, definitely in our black pile. I think that one still has enough black. All right, so now here's another one. This probably, to me, would end up in my medium pile. So do you see the contrast between the real darks and this particular? That definitely would read medium, wouldn't it? Okay, so that get, kind of gives you an idea of what you can do with the darks, the very, these black fabrics. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to resort our light pile. And again, it's going to be light or dark. That's definitely light, definitely dark. I think this still has a lot of white in it, so it's definitely reading light. All right, and so here's one that has quite a bit of print on it. Um, but I think when we get, I think it's going to read light for us once we get other fabrics next to it. A little darker than that. Let's see how that ends up. Again, light. Okay, that maybe is dark. Again, light. Or medium. Okay, so now you can see compared to that, these yellows definitely read medium to me. And so that would be darker than our lights. Okay, so now here's our light pile, and now this becomes part of our medium pile. So now let's take this stack and do exactly the same thing of light. Let's see, where were all those black ones that I had? Because that definitely will be in our dark pile. And so you can see this is lighter than that, so I'm going to put it in that pile. Now this would have been orange with a lot of black added to it, and I think that's going to start to read dark for us. Same with this color of green, it's probably going to read dark, and particularly when it's got black in it. Dark reds, red with black in it. Browns, all 
Now here's a black and white one that is mostly white, isn't it? And so to me, that's definitely going to read in the medium pile. And this one as well. All right, here's Kapow again. Um, it's going to read in our mediums. Okay, so I'm, I'm, just, I'm not going to continue doing that, but you get the idea because now this becomes our darks. These two become our mediums. And now you can see when I put this one against these other mediums, that really reads light, doesn't it? So I'm going to move that one back over there. And I think too, this one is going to read medium or light. And so now I have three piles, light, medium, and dark. Okay, we're going to take just a short word from our sponsor. And when we come back, I'm going to tell you what the next step is. Sewing, the choice of fabric artists for 40 years. You know, it's never been proven, but we all know that the floor gets two inches farther away every year on your birthday. We can help you out with that. You need a design wall. Check us out at offthewallquilt.com. Okay, welcome back. Well, now we have a job to do, and that is to draw a diagonal line on the back of every one of our light fabrics and every one of our medium fabrics. And the reason that we don't have to do anything with the dark fabrics is because we will always be sewing a light or a medium to the darks. So this takes a little while. It's good to do in front of the television uh, or if you're uh, listening to a book or something, this is good work to do when you can just sit in your easy chair, easy chair and do it. And so I'm going to use, I brought two different pencils that I use, and these both, uh, you can iron away the lines. Uh, the blue one is a Frixion pen, and this one happens to be blue, and this is Madame So, and it is red. And the reason I like both of these is when you are drawing, it's sort of like liquid ink so that it, it doesn't drag on your fabric like some other markers do. So I'm going to use the red one uh, just so that I can show you. And so I'm going to lay my ruler from corner to corner. And now if you took the, the basic class, our class number one, you'll remember that the one thing I told you that you want to stay away from doing is to start at one end and drag it all the way across because often your fabric will move and you can feel it move. And so I start in the middle and go to one end and then start in the middle and go to the other end. And now I have, I guess I need to do that again because it didn't, it didn't want to cooperate very well there, did it? I probably needed to scribble on something to get, there we go, to get it started. But this does flow very easily. And you, want, you want to make sure that you're, you're drawing on the back side. Line up the ends. Start in the middle. Go to the corner. And your line is all done. Okay, so that's what, how we do the lights. 
here's the mediums. We're going to do exactly the same thing. And I am putting a little pressure on my uh, ruler just because you don't want that to slide on you. This is, our, this is going to be the line that we will sew on either side of. And so that's the same way that we would mark the medium fabrics. So you want to do that to all 150 of your lights and all 150 of your mediums. Now the temptation might be for you to want to sew half square triangles and sew some of those together. Uh, but we're going to take a short break from our sponsors. And when I come back, I'm going to tell you why you don't want to do that. Tracy's Tables has all of your custom sewing table needs. Visit tracystables.com to see the complete line of unique tables, carts, and shelves. And all of Tracy's Tables are made in the USA. Okay, here's why you don't want to sew your half square triangles together. Primarily, it's because I'm going to have you sew those in such a way that it will keep this whole project organized with you. So in lesson two, we will be sewing our half squares and we'll be getting those all chained together so that sewing the blocks together will be a piece of cake after that. Now, if you're watching this program on Quilt TV on YouTube, that's the AQS channel, Quilt TV, I would encourage you to skip right down there and hit that subscribe button because every time we post a new video, you will get a message that there's a new AQS video on Quilt TV. And if you're not yet an AQS member, please go to AmericanQuilter.com and join AQS today. Well, and like everyone else, we can't wait to get back together. So we've got lots of things coming up and before you know it, we'll be having our quilt shows again. So we'll see you next week for lesson two.